Hi, how you doing? I'm Chris. And this is Justin. How's it? We're here with Ade Outrigger World. What we'd like to do before we get out on the water is kind of go over some rigging tips. So the first thing we want to understand is that uh, every canoe club has their style and their way of rigging. The first benefit that we have with the Matahina and um, the way it's manufactured is that this canoe is actually, and all of its parts come from one factory. The Yatus here, the Ama, and the hull itself are all designed uh, to fit each other. One of the questions we've had is, should we use strap, should we use string, or should we use rubber? So in the connection where we we're talking about using a, a mechanical strap versus rubber, if you guys know this is one inch nylon straps, there's no flex in these things at all. When they are rigged up and you ratchet them down, they are they are a really, really heavy pressure point. And uh, from a mechanical connection, especially when using carbon like this, with flex, if there's too much if there's too much pressure on one section of this connection right here, you risk a really big failure in this as the AMA is coming up and down with the water. The rubber gives you a little bit more flexibility and it also will protect the equipment from having a catastrophic failure. So from a practicality standpoint, rubber is really easy to get, it's really easy to replace and um, you can go to your local bike shop and pick up boxes full of used tubes that they've changed out of bicycles. We do it all the time, cut them, strip them and use them uh, for our applications on the canoes. Rubber, I think, is going to be your, your, your go-to. Yeah. So the first thing we did with this canoe is um, we tied the Yatus to the Ama. And um, just to kind of give you um, a little bit less time of watching us here on the camera. But so we rigged the Ama with the Yatus. Nice square rigging uh, from the Yaku out to the Ama. Get a nice flush, you know, more or less flush mount right here. Just to start. Then we'll go back to the Pepe Al and we'll set the Yaku on the Pepe Al. The key to this now is just have someone holding this so you get the Yaku flat on the Pepe Al. And they can still be adjusted with the rubber straps. But what we do is we kind of set that up so then we can bring this uh, outrigger assembly, okay, to the main hole, the main hole of the boat. And now we can kind of, as Justin said, he can slide this towards me if he likes. Mm -hmm. The whole thing moves. If he pushes down on it, there's going to be a little bit of, of a gap here or a gap here. Mm -hmm. And so those are all going to be the adjustments um, we're going to do later on. Lay this thing flat when you get on the beach. I'm going to start rigging this right here. And basically this rig that I'm doing is all you need to do to get started. Okay. Um, it's very simple and it's going to be very quick. So here I am. I put one piece of the rubber in between and that's just to keep it from sliding. And basically all I'm doing now is stretching. I'm not having to pull this thing so tight that it's that it's going to break or that it's going to overstretch, okay? Because with the rubber straps, the more layers you put on with this amount of pressure, okay, the tighter it's going to get, all right? And basically, this is one person. If we had, um, if we were doing this with string, you'd probably need two people, one person mm -hmm. to kind of hold the tension of the string, okay? I can hold the tension of this rubber strap. With just a couple straps that Chris has put on that one side, I can let go of this Alma walk over here now the rubber strap supporting it from the outside corner i can then grab my my strap right here and i can get in and help chris finish the rigging inside connection all you do with this last bit i'm just going to overlap the last end of the rubber strap stick it underneath and you can put this on the bottom i'm doing it on the top just to kind of show everybody and basically that's it Okay, that's gonna be in there. If this was my top strap, I'd probably do it once or twice more, just to make sure that thing's in. Again, this is just one layer. So you wanna put maybe two, three, four layers on here, just to be sure, okay? But um, this canoe went out today with just the one strap. That we're out in calm water, but that's, that's basically- That fast. A rigged canoe. And before we go out and start making any technical adjustments, um, we just lay this out, all the parts flat, onto the hull. The Yaku's flat onto the Ama. Yep. Rubber it up, and basically, you're good from a basic standpoint of now you can take the canoe, and like you said, you want to float the canoe yeah. and make those adjustments. But again, this boat was made out of the factory 
to be paddled like this. We have different teams, different race crews, different sizes, different conditions. So what we want to kind of just show you here with the Montejina is, um, and with the rubber straps that we've already established, is that there's really quick adjustments that you can do to make this canoe fit any of those conditions. But now with the rubber straps, it's, it's endless. Um, the first one I want to talk about, Justin, is the shims. So what the shims do, okay, and this is kind of an example of a shim. Uh, could be shorter, could be taller. It depends on what you want to do. What the shim can do for you is it can basically adjust how the AMA or the outrigger planes on the water. So it's kind of funny because the AMA is way out there and your adjustment is way in here. But you'll see that as this is connected through the Yatu is that raising up the Yatu here with the shim is going to let your AMA plane a little bit higher. Okay? Now that's what we would call on the inside. All right? With the rubber straps, we can take this off and we can slide that shim in. We're not going to do that just yet because I'm going to explain if you put a shim on the outside, it's going to allow your AMA to go down. Now, all of that, again, is adjusting your AMA, but why would you want to adjust your AMA, Justin? Yeah, for uh, different water conditions, depending on how it's planing in the water, there are a lot of variables there that you have to pay attention to. So if you had, say you had a real heavy crew, okay, some big guys. Like me. Or big girls. <laughs> what you want to understand is that the canoe may end up, and this is the hull, the main hull now, may end up leaning to the right or to the left, okay? So the funny thing is, is we're making the adjustment here to adjust the AMA, but what that's really adjusting is how your main hull, okay, of your canoe is sitting. Now, a faster, a fastest hull for a V6 is gonna be straight up and down. But with the variables of a crew size, that's not always gonna happen on the rig. So if the AMA goes down, lower this is going to sit upright or even to the right all right so what we want to try to do is um, and you had mentioned this before is you want to take the canoe out and float it that means get everybody in the canoe that's going to paddle it get it out on the water and have everybody sit in the canoe yeah. you want to explain how that kind of works yeah so um, in any, any situation you look at you have six seats here for six paddlers and the variables and the weight of size of these people the paddlers and these crews are going to change how the canoe sits in the water so the more weight obviously the more displacement the canoe sits down lower can change the angle of the canoe from leaning to the left to straight to right if you get a really heavy crew in it it's going to sink the canoe down lower and you're going to get a canoe that is going to be what we call tippy so a lot of weight really light on the ama if you had a super light crew it's going right. to lean the other way. Right, that's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the adjustments you have to make. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put in a shim for you, and we're going to show you how quick it is. Um, and that is going to be, again, to get your canoe to sit upright in the water, depending on the size of crew. So you want to go ahead and yeah. um, which one should we so do? So let's say, let's say we're going to have a heavier crew with a lot of displacement, and we need to, we need to bring the AMA up a little bit to get the canoe back to center. So what we're going to do is shim the inside um, left of this of this canoe right here on this yato and then we're gonna show you how fast and easy that is got it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. You ready to go yep. okay at this point once the rubber's off I'll you just give a give. simple lift okay. shim goes in good yeah set I it down this one a little bit nah, it's good nope. right Rubber goes right back on. That's right. So again, he's just applying the, the standard pressure on the rubber. Yep. The more um, layers of the rubber straps you put on, the more obviously, balance. the more strength you're going to have. So you can rubber on the inside, which is what Justin's doing, or you can rubber a uh, shim on the outside, depending again on the size of your crew, where yeah. you want your AMA to sit, and how you want your canoe to sit upright. For a lighter crew, we would have put the shim on the outside. Right, okay. That's it. All right.
Chris, why don't you touch a little bit on the distance of the AMA to the canoe and what that does based on experience right. and what approach we're taking as a, as a paddling team. Okay, so we've already adjusted the, um, the AMA here with the shims. All right, so that means we got our canoe fairly straight up, all right, to run as uh, efficient as it possibly can. Well, I want to discuss and what Justin is saying is you can actually adjust the AMA to get closer to the hole or further away from the hole. If you bring in the AMA closer, okay, it's going to be a little bit quicker, it's going to be a little more efficient, but it's also going to be tippy. Right. So sometimes leaving it out is going to be the best thing for, um, you know, a beginner crew or maybe for uh, just a leisure crew mm -hmm. where you're not having to stress so much on keeping the balance or everything in the center of the canoe. So we, when you get your canoe on the beach, you want to just set everything flush and that's just a general good place to start. Um, what I'm going to have Justin do is pull in the AMA. So the whole assembly comes in and now that AMA is actually closer to the hull um, by an inch. And let's go ahead and go give me one more. How about right there? All right. So now we're bringing it in and what that's going to do is it's going to create a more efficient uh, outrigger. There's going to be a little bit less resistance. It's going to be a little bit quicker, but it's also going to be a lot tippier. Okay, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. But uh, a team that's looking to go fast or looking to race, they're going to adjust this so that they're going to run that AMA as close as they possibly can to the hull before it's too tippy. Okay, and um, that's going to be that's going to be where you're going to fit in, and you're going to kind of measure up your crew, measure up your uh, ability to uh, balance the AMA, and um, you know see if that's what you want to do. If you were a crew that is just getting started, you might want to keep this AMA assembly a little bit further out and you can make that adjustment just the same as we did this adjustment. So that AMA is now closer, which is going to make it more efficient, it's going to make it quicker, but it's also going to make it tippier. Yeah. So you just kind of, kind of weigh it out and see uh, what's comfortable for you. Um, I always say don't change anything on race day, be used to it, train with it, Make the adjustments on the beach in the water you're used to. Have your crew make the adjustments. Have your steersmen get used to that, and um, you know you'll be a well you'll have a well-rounded rigging. Yeah. As a side note or a question to Chris, on when we do this adjustment on the inside, let's say on the front, we would do the same exact on the rear. Correct? Sure. Yep. Sure. Remember, this was designed for any level of paddler, whether you're a racer or a leisure or you're out with the family. This is for everybody and we want to be able to share that with you we want to be safe we want you to have the confidence i mean this is a great sport it will change your life on behalf of re outrigger world and chris and myself we'd like uh, to thank you guys for taking part of this and um, hope you guys enjoy your experience in uh, re tahiti matahina thank you so much